Comic fam, we love the convention stories. I don't know if you can tell, we really miss them. I miss them so much because sometimes I really want to buy a nice book. And you can get books, you know, you can get books if you're patient, you're, you know, looking on eBay or hitting Craigslist, you're reaching out to your network, checking LCS is regularly frequenting half price books, wherever you can go. And the problem when you're buying offline is you never know really what you're going to get. There's always that risk, you know, whether it be USPS or this person selling them, you know, you can tell somebody all day long that you want something shipped in a box. Doesn't always mean that it's going to be shipped in a box. And I want to chat about a recent purchase I made. I'm not going to talk about where I got it, but I will say I bought it offline. And I don't want to point to any sellers because this is a situation where I don't know 100% that this was done on purpose. This could have been done out of ignorance. I'm going to give the person the benefit of the doubt. But I did almost get screwed over this week. I bought a book. And for the first time, really, I had this experience where I had to return it because I felt like it was fraudulently dealt. And what I mean by that is not that I suspected it was stolen or something like that. No, I got this book and I'm going to show it to you. Actually, take a look at this book right in front of you. This 9.8. We're dealing with a Wolverine, you know, first is patch in his own solo series right after the Miller four issue run of Wolverine. Can you describe what you're looking at to our audio listeners and make sure to touch on the back pin up that is so underrated. So this is a classic Wolverine number one cover. It's 1988. Um, this is Wolverine or his patch at the time standing on a group of bodies with his claws out. I mean, it's, it's as iconic as it gets for anybody in that time frame. And of course, of course, you got an amazing black cover with the integration of the negative space into Wolverine. I mean, it's, it's an awesome book, man. Like if anyone from the eighties, um, was reading comics, you know, this book. Absolutely. And let's actually chat about what this book used to go for on the con floor, let's say a decade ago. Graded or raw? Raw. All right. So if you had a raw 98 of this book a decade ago, sure. 20 bucks. 20, 30 bucks, right? Yeah. And then the Miller issue would be like 40 to 50. People trying to, you know, push that value up because it did come out a little earlier. Well, right now you're holding a book that I paid a thousand dollars for. Okay. And the reason why it's a thousand is because it is graded at 9.8 and these books have moved up quite a bit in the last few months. We've been chatting about this book as well as the limited series being something to spec on because Wolverine keys are blowing up. And this book is not just moving quick, selling for above $600, I believe in a 9.8, maybe closer to like, actually, no, I think 600 is probably right around where it's selling, uh, maybe even more now, but this is a newsstand copy. You know, that barcode matters. And I'm very interested in spec from that particular era to have the new stamp barcode because it was under 5% of the print run. At least that's what we know to be true right now. And this particular book was one that was so scarce. I've been waiting months and months for one to come up. I've seen CBCS graded copies. I've been waiting for a CGC graded copy. I've been waiting for one that looked really well with that barcode. And I waited, man, I bought it out of country and waited in the mail. The sellers seem legit, had great ratings. The pictures look fine. You know, they weren't the best pictures, but there certainly wasn't pictures of the sides of the comic. And there are so many red flags about this book. And unfortunately, I don't know if the problem that it presents at first glance is indeed what happened. You know, it's kind of riding a fine line of red flags and could this actually be just someone storing books improperly. But regardless, can you describe how this looks right now? And then I will tell you how it was mailed to me. I mean, just looking on straight on, you know, it looks fine. But if you check the perimeter of the book, the edges, it just seems they were taped. So all the edges were taped. At least the bottom edge here is taped. When this was mailed to me initially, I opened this up and it was in two different bags. So there was layers upon layers and it looked gorgeous in the two bags. Pulled it out. And the entire perimeter, minus where the sticker with the label information on the very top, the entire perimeter of that slab had scotch tape all around it. So what you're seeing on the bottom is what I left. Can you describe the scotch 
tape job that was done on the bottom because that's how the whole book looked. It's a pretty good job. I'll be honest. It's it's meant to look very seamless and clean. So it isn't like you scotch tape this with eight to 12 pieces overlapping each other. It's just a very nice strip. It's very dull in, in color because the tape is dull in a, a, uh, comparison to the plastic. So it just looks like someone trimmed to make it look like a film almost on the edge in a kind of malicious, sneaky kind of way, maybe? Sneaky is a good way to put it. You know, first off, can you think of any reason to put no. tape around? Yeah, not at no. all. I mean, even these older cases, yeah, they could be bent a little bit. You can move them, crack them open just a tad. You know, they're older. They've improved over time over at CGC. But I can't think of one reason to put tape around the entire perimeter of the book, let alone the danger that it would be that if this was somehow removed and replaced with another Wolverine newsstand issue number one that was in high grade, that this multiplier of the barcode would be in line of the kind of money you're trying to make off a small fraud attempt. Yeah, so you're saying someone pulled a switcheroo here. They kept the 9-8 label because it doesn't say newsstand on here. It just says 9-8. So if you switched out the newsstand with a regular direct edition, I mean, yeah, you could be coming up on it pretty good. Or any real copy in here that's not a 9-8. Right. You Maybe a 9-6. Nine, six. Yeah, you never know. 9-6, 9-0, 9-2. People, most people just read the label. Not everyone gets in there and takes a look at the book. So, I mean, there's always that chance. This is a nice looking book. It's really nice, man. It was a tough decision to make. But the thing is that although CGC does do reholders, the sides of this slab, you can move them far enough to see that it's not completely sealed in the top right or left. Like one of the corners is just enough cracked that I would suspect CGC would demand a regrade of that book. And that's way too much of a risk, regardless of how nice that book is. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to always you don't want to take that chance because I don't know. There's inconsistencies right now, and it's difficult to always guarantee a nine eight. Right. Even though this looks gorgeous, it's just why you're putting money out. You know, rather the money put into something that's a for sure thing. But I get it. Like these were already kind of you could always kind of put a little gap in them. Mm -hmm. You could pull them apart some, and you know, and you can kind of get in there, get wedge stuff in there. Um, but this is just once you start cracking the uh, clips. Yeah, those and clips. Through there There's and clips in the, each corner of the book. And those clips, what they'll do, I believe, is they'll like shatter a little bit. These clips are like a clear little pin that actually seals the slab together, holds it together. And they put it in there, I believe, during the like pressurized moment in the clamp with, with whatever machine that they use. They're tamper proof. So when they're tampered with, that indicates to CGC that, oh no, this is now destroyed the grading credibility. So although I am not 100% certain that this was intentional, I'm giving the person the benefit of the doubt. Fortunately, I do have um, a route to go to make sure that I'm protected. But this is a great learning experience, not just for myself, but for other members. You need to look at your slab. If I took this out of the box, the way that it was presented and said, oh, I got a 9.8 newsstand. I'm happy with it. Let me put it with all my others and not pulled it out of the multiple bags, I, I literally didn't notice the tape at first. I was looking at the book. I was looking at the grade. I was looking at the case quality. It wasn't until I started feeling around the edges looking for cracks because I'm like, oh, I don't want a cracked case just in case, let alone tape around the entire perimeter of the slab. So look for those red flags, comic fam. And also, I had a very interesting moment when I was chatting with the guru about this last night. And he says, oh, yeah, I got a story, too. It's funny. It's also <laughs> about the same character. And I'm like, oh, dude, you have a, a, a story about the switcheroo, somebody doing something wrong? And he goes, yeah, man, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm like, okay. Well, I'm thinking, you know, like, he has like a random graded book that he had this done to. You know, what could be better than a Wolverine 1 newsstand 9.8 that I just dropped a grand on? And this mofo says, oh, dude, I have a Hulk 181 that I bought that was graded at 9.8. What the hell, dude? I've never heard this story. What went down? So, yeah, it was 2011. So it's 10 years ago, about a decade ago. And uh, I remember, again, dealing on eBay. At the time, that was just a pretty prevalent place to go for comic books. And um, there was a Hulk 2198. I was like, oh, this is awesome. 
I want this book. It had a strong sale. I made an offer on it or bought or popped up on eBay and I bought it now. I can't even hundred percent remember, you know, what happened. What's your gut guess of what that was back then? Like what you, what the offer would have been. Cause like the yeah, numbers yeah, are so you. different. No. Yeah. I remember. So the numbers are way different because um, that book went up and down quite a bit. Um, the, the previous year and the upcoming years, it went down to 181 first 181. full appearance of Wolverine. Yeah. It wasn't until like 2016, 17, you started to see that book explode again and start taking up consistently every year. It, it actually dropped price, but I was thinking it was probably around a $15,000 book would have been retail. And I was getting it um, for, I think about 10. And so I was excited. I was like, great. I got some value out of this book. It's an awesome book. Excited for it. And I make my payment. I put it on my credit, on a credit card. Okay. I wanted to protect myself twice. Once with PayPal, credit card, just get it covered. Okay. Cause you just never know, you know, when you deal on eBay a lot. And at that time I was dealing a lot and I was trying to reach people off of eBay, just doing anything I can to score books and collections. So you got to always protect yourself. And I get the book in and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, something's not right about this book, man. It doesn't look nine, eight. It seems like the corners have been glued. I was like, are they on the slab, on the slab. I was like, corners are glued. I was like, it doesn't look right. So I, I had to file a claim on it because I was like, this is not right. It doesn't feel good. This doesn't look like a 9-8. These corners are glued. Something's not right here. Okay. Because it's not, it should never be like that. There shouldn't be any type of uh, funny business, you know, or any types of shenanigans to your, to your holders. It just shouldn't be. And so then I go through the whole process. And at the time, you were supposed to get a third party letter from another company to confirm your suspicions. Okay. So I sent mine to Metropolis. I was like, I'm going to take it to one of the biggest comic auction houses. All right. I contacted them. I knew a guy there and I sent it over to him and he took a look at it and he looked at it. And he's just like, this is nine, nine, eight. I called and I looked up the number, um, with CGC at the time you had to call CGC and they will give you notes. They used to give you notes for free, by the way, guys, another thing they're not doing now. And so, um, you call them, you got the notes for free. So they got the notes and he said it was a nine O. Oh. All right. And he took a closer look at it and somebody put a sticker of a nine eight on the label. Whoa. Yeah. The sticker had a, just a layer of tape over it. No, they just literally cut out a square and like put it in just super clean looking. Okay. Whoa. But when you look at it, you're like, Oh, that is not, that's a sticker on top of it. Okay, so crazy. I was like, oh, my God, he sends me this letter. And then uh, this whole letter explaining what's, what's going on, what it is. He sends the book back to me. I The letter's passed on to PayPal. This whole process is like a 45-day or, ordeal. Like, they have my money. They're holding my money. Uh, they're trying to get a hold of the other person who's not responding. Okay, I have to send the book back. All right, I don't have my money. I'm sending this book away. And then because I involved my credit card, apparently the process takes even longer now. Like whatever dumb rule they had, they, were, they weren't they were handling it. They were taking a long time. I was like, okay, so maybe I'll just involve my credit card too. The second I did that, that added even more time to the process. I was like, ugh, I cannot win here, man. So with that said, time goes by. I sent the book and it goes to the address and no one was there to sign for it. Okay. The book then eventually comes back to me. All right. Gets back to return to center. I'm like, okay, what do I do with this? Like it's been 45 days. I've sent the book. No one's resigned for it. No one's received it. The address isn't there. They're like, okay, we'll just keep the book. I was like, okay, so I can just keep this. Right. You're like, yeah, it's now yours. I was like, all right. So this is that book. Oh my gosh, you have it. So yeah, that's I still the, have this that's book. That's the same. <laughs> and we, I have a picture of the uh, slab book, by the way. Wow. I still have it from two, 10 years ago. So beautiful look copy. Look at it and compare them and you'll see the sticker. Oh yeah. Beautiful copy. Clear as day, not a 9.8. And we'll show pictures to the comic fam, but I'll describe it to the audio fam. We have right on this cover, aside from the greatest Canadian superhero battling the Hulk with the Wendigo just looking triumphant in the background because he's getting help, you know. We have multiple, you know, at least five different collar-breaking creases on the spine, as well as just a near-perfect cover. I mean, I, I don't see much 
because of this mylar, but you know what? In the light, I can see dents. I can see some, that's on the comic, I'm assuming. It looks like there's dents right on the cover here. Um, and then the back, super clean. You know, it was done with intention. You know, they were looking for a near flawless copy that they can just get past maybe a novice collector, someone who hadn't owned a book in this grade or maybe spent that kind of money before, but you got to watch out. That's crazy that you got it. So you got your money back and you got to keep the book. Fascinating. It was a stressful 45 plus days because I wasn't sure what's going to happen. It's out there in the mail. I was like, God, I don't know what's going to, once it leaves my hands again, I was like, then I got nothing. And um, I was, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, well, I, you know, I'm get, I guess it's worth it now, but you know, when you look at this, it does have the thumbprints like you mentioned on here. And they said it was a 9-0. This could still be, a, you know, a 9-0, maybe a 9-2 with a press. It needs a press, man. There's definitely some flaws on there that could be pressed out. Uh, for sure. You know, I say in this current market, it's a minimum 9-0. Minimum. So easy nine oh. what's a, a 9-0 go for right now in today's market? I think a 9-0 goes for 15. There you go. 9-2 goes for like 18 give or take, somewhere around there, give or take. Crazy how much the market has changed in a short decade. Comic fam, it looks like both, I mean, I'm at least going to save my money here, but you came out on top because yours was a clear case of some shenanigans happening. And we don't want that to happen with comics. We want you to protect yourselves, especially when you're dealing with expensive paper. It gets pretty pricey. 